Alison Tickell and I'm speaking to you from London. Actually, I'm speaking to you from Oxford. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm coming to you today from New York. I'll do that again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jochen Falls, speaking to you from Sao Paulo in Brazil. A very warm welcome, or rather snowy welcome, from Verbier. I am Annelixi Brenny, and I'm the founder of the Verbier Art Summit. Here in Verbier is the setting where I normally meet you, and where I hope to meet you many more times. But this year, it's different, and we have to make do with a new, more virtual world. First of all, I would like to thank you for being here, virtually, and for being part of the summit's ongoing mission to drive social change through art. Each year, our non-profit platform brings together innovative thinkers with artists to kick off debates on important social issues. As you may know, the fourth summit took place in January 2020, around a theme chosen by Jessica Morgan of the DIA Art Foundation in New York resource hungry, our cultured landscape and its ecological impact. And this is the theme that we will further deepen at this first ever virtual summit. We have organized two new Swiss talks and one debate here from Verbier. But we will also present one talk from Brazil and four international debates with former and new summit speakers coming from New York, Los Angeles, London, Sao Paulo, Cuiabá, Rome, Montana, Oxford, Amsterdam, Stockholm and Beijing. A new way forward. That was the hopeful message that came out of the 2020 summit. New ways of looking at the world. New ways of listening and new ways of understanding. For the summit itself, Great inspiration was found in the 2020 Resource Hungry theme and its accompanying publication, such as the beautiful writing by the Brazilian philosopher Jamila Ribeiro, who explains how in Brazil, you cannot talk about ecology without also talking about racism and feminism. And that we need to listen to the young voices, as the youth seems to be much more clear that ecological action is needed now like we saw in a beautiful film by the American artist Andrea Bowers on the activist work of the powerful 16-year-old indigenous Dakota Iron Eyes, who stood up in the Standing Rock protest against the Dakota Access Pipeline. And also that we need to change the summit itself, very much inspired by the talk of the Swiss theatre maker Stefan Kegi, who always thinks outside the box and asked, how can we transform our industries and ourselves? Our new thinking at the summit is to engage local communities in an inclusive project by setting up local Verbier Art Micro Summits in communities all over the world to build action around our annually changing social theme. We will connect and exchange through digital tools. So we are actually very happy with this year's virtual event as we can test the platform. And we will actively look for your feedback to see how we can improve things as we go along. The pandemic showed us how we are all globally connected and that we need to work together to control the virus. The same applies to the climate crisis. It affects all of us and only together we can find solutions. This will be a time of great change and art can enable such transformations and offer different perspectives on our resource-hungry age. The 2021 Virtual Summit is therefore structured around three important questions regarding hope, future and trust, as formulated by Jessica. Let's listen to what she has to say. As has been pointed out by so many and far more eloquently than I, it's saddening that it took a virus to hold aspects of our culture that were destroying the environment 
And while we can momentarily be happy about the clear skies, birdsong, and green life returning to our cities, we have to simultaneously acknowledge what else has taken hold during this time. The domination of the digital divide in all societies, the fact that this virus has affected overwhelmingly people of color and communities in poverty, that individual industries that were already destroying small-scale business and a diversity of production have taken hold of our lives entirely, and that so many authoritarian and dictatorial governments have used this shutdown to enforce a further stranglehold on opposition and human rights. The history of culture has been a history of marking the landscape, and the cultural field has acted as witness and often contributed to our ecological crisis. If anything, COVID-19 has made evident that the world is connected now more than ever through trade, technology, and culture, but it is also indelibly connected through air, water, and weather patterns that pay no heed to national and political boundaries. One can hope that a moment like this is a reset, an opportunity to reset. As we reopen, restart, resume, and return, can we do so differently, mindfully, and with an urgent consideration for those most affected by this disease who are and will be the most affected by climate change? Asked to summarize some of the points from 2020 that we learned, I noted the following, that we urgently need to learn from the light touch and holistic thinking of indigenous cultures that have cared for the land for generations, that we need to reassess the spaces, habits, structures, and systems of culture to find new ways to operate and new ways to experience, that culture has a role to play in supporting and asserting the work and voice of thinkers, activists, and especially the young people who are demanding a new way forward, that nothing less than a total rethink of our values is needed. At a time when all of us in cultural institutions most closely examine our behavior and mission, to reimagine a reopening and return that will not and, and should not be the same as before. These are guidelines and concepts that I will return to in my own work as we move forward together as a team. Rather than using this time to turn inward and retreat from the questions posed in Verbier, now is the moment to reflect on them and how we can evolve in response to them. The phrase oft repeated by Annalise during the summit, do less, better, resonates now more than ever. And as I revisit the statement for the summit, once again, it reinforces the significance of what was being discussed for the current moment we find ourselves in and the future we must build. For the 2021 summit, I invited an artist, a scientist, and two prominent figures active in decision-making position to pursue the ressource hungry theme. Awareness of environmental issues is essential to our life on Earth. We are the virus, but also the only vaccine that exists to slow down climate change. The 2021 summit speakers are invited by Jean-Paul Follet, the summit's academic director and director of the ETHEA, the Valais School of Art. They include the Swiss artist Claudia Comte, professor of environmental sciences at EPFL Tom Batten, and cultural leaders Heidi Graber, head of the Cultural and Social Directorate at the Federation of Migro Cooperatives, and Madeleine Schuckli, head of visual arts at the Swiss Arts Council Pro Helvetia. The summit's strategic director, Beatrix Roof, conceived the international debate series, moderated by the former partnering museum directors and coming from all over the world, New York, Sao Paulo, London and Beijing. The debates include speakers such as the artist Andrea Bowers, Carolina Caicedo, Naina Terena and Claire Twomey, the architect Philip Ram, philosopher Jamila Ribeiro, Professor Timothy Lequin, museum directors Daniel Birnbaum, Elvira Diangani Ose, Jessica Morgan, Philip Tenari, and Jochen Volt, as well as ecological change makers such as Alison Tickel, the founder of Judy's Bicycle, a London based charity that supports the creative community to act on climate change and sustainability issues. Each debate will feature once in our Live Now section and will be live streamed on social media at the same time, including a live Q&A with the panelists, so make sure to watch them. What does it mean to 
um, yeah, to act as an international institution if you cannot have physical exchange internationally anymore. You know, whenever we start our journey, we never know what comes out. So we, we never know what the outcome is. And, and that's, that's really thrilling, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And that's also how discoveries are being made, for instance. This is a, a dress rehearsal, so to say, yeah. for things that have to be developed over the next couple of years. And also a moment when the nations put enormous budgets into programs, they should also insist on change. A moment where the artist is not necessarily uh, at the at the top of a uh, of an of a pyramid. It's, it is one more in a in a let's say in a collective voice and a collective consciousness. This emphasis on ideas and discourse, and as you said, sort of a spiritual idea of who we are as creatures came to the fore. And I think as a historian, I ask, well, why did that happen at that particular period? And I think it was because of the unusual circumstance of the post-war period, where there was sort of this illusion that technology was going to take over everything, that humans really could control the world and control themselves, right? That they could re-engineer themselves and re-engineer the environment pretty much with impunity and successfully. And that overweening sort of Promethean arrogance, I think, became the dominant idea and sort of filtered into the humanities as well. And people thought, well, it's what we think. It's what we, we can be whoever we want to be. At the height of the movement, there was 15,000 people there, all standing for the same thing and all standing there to protect the water. So it's the situation where you're seeing the world in which we could be living in, this world of unity and love and passion and gratitude for one another. And you're also seeing a very real conflict and very real violence that that, that sort of disruption to the system creates because people are willing to die to keep things the way that they are, even though the way that things are right now is killing us. I mean, I think Standing Rock made me grow up a lot more than I probably should have. Because when you're in the, these situations of conflict and when you're in this situation of fighting constantly, you don't get to have a childhood because you have your purpose already. Children are meant to wait and grow and figure out what they want to do and who they want to be. But if you're fighting for, for something as simplistic as water and safety, those things turn you into an adult because everybody should have those already. And you're not supposed to be worrying about it when you're a child. Standing Rock also gave me every single person that I have around me in my life right now. It's given me purpose and it's giving me a path to follow in a world that seems so crazy because even in this crazy time of climate crisis, I know that there's an opportunity for real unity around the entire globe to unite against this. Even in the worst of times, there's going to be a possibility for something better, and it's going to be real, and all it takes is for us to do our part. And don't forget to get inspired by our Arts and Ecology section, which shows you resource-hungry books, films, apps that you can download, and games that you can play with your friends and family. At the end of your summit experience, we recommend you submit a pledge card telling us which of the summit actions you will undertake. Will you drive social change through art, community, action, debate or through exchange? You can add a quote to explain in your own words how you will create impact against our resource-hungry era. But for now, we wish you an enjoyable summit and hope to learn about your pledge very soon.